A lot of people want to get a Haskell job. One way to get a Haskell job is to make your current job a Haskell job. I want to share a few methods of introducing Haskell into a company. Growing from there or making Haskell a primary language is a whole other topic. Note that this method can be applied to any niche language or technology. We chose Haskell to be specific. This method might not work for you or your company, but you won't know if you don't try. So let's go in the order of complexity. The first method is to build tools and scripts using Haskell. Every now and then we stumble on tedious tasks that can be done with a script or automated. Doing some primitive data investigation, searching for anomalies in the logs, making requests while handling authentication, authorization, and so on. Just check your scripts directory. How many one of scripts I actually used once? Why not help your future self and write maintainable scripts? What if you put your bash aside next time and do it in Haskell? Aren't you tired of guessing how the script's arguments supposed to work? Or dealing with deprecated usage comments? Haskell is one of the best languages for writing CLI tools. It also allows us to provide neat interfaces for our tools. For example, this is how we add a comprehensive usage or help screen with opparse applicative library. This helper takes any parser and adds a help option to it. And then running the program with help option displays a full help text. You're gonna see the usage with descriptions, all the available options, and all the available commands. The next level is automating your occasional support requests and even tasks for other departments. For instance, you don't have to manually quickly get reports or search for some data inconsistencies. Just build a quick Haskell tool for it. Bonus points if you can slap a UI on top of it, even if it only has one button and one output. Nobody even have to ask you, heard a colleague complain about routine task? Give them a Haskell tool, endpoint, or UI, and make their life easier. Beware that this should not come at the expense of your actual work. Even though this brings outside karma, your boss might not be as happy. If you're handling both, good. Nobody gets fired for doing too much work. But watch out for burnout. Two, build prototypes using Haskell. The ancient wisdom says there is nothing more permanent than temporary. If you've been in the tech industry for some time, you've probably noticed that nobody rewrites prototypes. Prototypes just go to production. Occasionally, the big let's do a rewrite gets dropped if the survey grows and becomes important. So why not make a prototype in Haskell? Worst case, you or someone else have to do rewrite in a year or two. Beware that you might need to do a lot of work and quickly, especially if this is your first real Haskell service. But nobody said it's going to be easy. You might say, what if it doesn't work for my company? What if we don't do prototypes? Well, maybe it's time to introduce prototypes. Or perhaps it's time to do an internal hackathon. The same law applies to the prototypes written during hackathons. 3. Clone your CTO. The fastest way to switch to Haskell is to clone your CTO and switch immediately. Some argue that cloning a CTO is more complicated than selling Haskell to one, but I disagree. I have yet to see somebody at that level without prior Haskell experience get convinced to switch to Haskell. On the other hand, if you get blessed with a CTO who knows the pros and cons of using Haskell and is open to it, that's it, you made it. The last alternative is to become a CTO. This should be self-explanatory. 4. Start with gateway drugs. The slowest way is to introduce different technologies to build up to Haskell. For instance, if you're doing JavaScript, the jump to Haskell is too big. You might need to go through something like Elm or PureScript first. Or if you're doing Java, something like Rust or Scala could be your intermediate step. But you have to keep pushing the limit of these tools. Otherwise, you can settle on the local maximum, which might be a great outcome. So start a functional study group, make good use of types and abstraction, etc, etc. If you get carried away, for example, start abusing operators or doing type-level hackery just for the sake of type-level hackery with no real benefits, you risk turning people away from functional programming and Haskell forever. If you play your cards right, build up the hype right, and your team, department, or company has ripened, then switching to Haskell is unavoidable at some point. 5. Strike a deal with an upper manager. This one is the most complicated and should be used as a last resort. It's a well-known technique, but often used in reverse or retrospect. But you can use it up front. If you know a self-aware manager who's been given a project doomed to fail and doesn't want to be blamed for it in the future, you can arrange to use Haskell for that project and use it later as a scapegoat. You can find multiple projects documented online that failed for reasons, and Haskell was publicly blamed for the failure. No questions asked. None of the managers took the accountability. Haskell is a perfect scapegoat. It's proven to work.
So you get time to write Haskell, the manager gets another project, or maybe a promotion, and Haskell keeps avoiding success. You're welcome. So in conclusion, if you are wondering how to start getting paid for doing Haskell, I hope you now have something to experiment with. And in case it wasn't clear, the more people and experience you will have, the more likely you can do this.